This cart has a few issues. The tire doesn't hold air. Hmm. All right, guys, here we have a 2005 EasyGo TXT gas. This one here has got quite a few issues. Based on the intro, you saw <laughs> we've got a tire problem. The other issue, the other big issue, I should say, is it's a crank start, but you have to hold the choke out, and you basically kind of have to feather the choke in order to keep it running. So I'm assuming we have some carburetor issues, possibly valve issues. It, it's kind of running a little crappy. It's running super rich. Uh, we're probably gonna end up doing a service on this thing. Oil change filters, spark plugs, air, you know, that kind of stuff. And we'll see what else we need to do to it after we get it running. So hopefully we can get this thing done today and out of here without having to throw any parts at it. And it will be a simple fix. So let's jump into it. So the absolute first thing I wanna tackle is gonna be this front tire. I wanna get this changed so we can actually get it up on the ramps here and be able to just get under right here get it up in the air real quick this will be a simple change out this ain't no big deal but i just figured i would take you guys for the ride three quarter inch socket pop this off hopefully They're simple three quarter or 19 millimeter. This is basically the same tire that's on the other side, which worked out really good. This one does show a few signs of cracking in the sidewall, but it's been holding air for the whole winter, so I know that it's good. And they're not leaking. I did soap check them, spray a little bit of Dawn and water over the tire surface. I like to use a very heavy concentration of Dawn in water. I don't know the exact ratio. I never really measured it. And then what I'll do is I'll get one lug nut started, go to the other side, get it tight, go back, and that will center the wheel. And then just go around real quick with the light impacting and get them on there. And then that just makes sure that the wheel's not like wobbly on the lugs because the lug nuts you got to make sure you put the the tapered side towards the wheel because the lug nuts are what center the wheels on the hub i've seen so many carts come in here that <laughs> they have the lug nuts with the shoulder or the tapered side facing out and they're wondering why the cart's driving wonky down the road let's double check our tire pressure whilst we are here before we go and start 18. So let's get it up to 22. Doesn't take much. 21.9. That's pretty close. Let's just give it a little poof there. 22. Perfect. Well, 22.2 .2 if you want to be, if you want the precise number, but it doesn't matter. Okay. That job's done. Now let's get under the seat and see if we can figure out why this thing won't stay running. All right, so we got the cart up on the ramps here. I'm gonna get the camera mounted to the cart and we'll lift the seat off and we'll see what's going on underneath there. All right, let's get this seat off. Pop this off, put it over here. I am trying a couple of different new things in making videos, guys, so if there's something that you see that you like or don't like, just let me know. I'm interested in your feedback. All right, so in order to get this running, I'm gonna pop it into neutral here real quick just so we don't have the tires vibrating like crazy. What we have to do is I'll, I'll crank it over, full throttle, nothing. Wow. So I don't know if you can see the smoke coming out. So I'll give it a full choke, and then I'll let off the choke. And I basically have to there's, all, there's almost, there's practically no 
play in the little bit. There's very little play. There's like maybe an eighth of an inch play in the choke before I get it running. I'd like to start with the carburetor. Let's see how this looks. Oh, well. I think that filter is a little dirty. What do you think? All right, so here's a new one. Here's the old one. I think it's dirty. What do you guys think? I'm gonna actually use my air ratchet. I know some of you guys give me a hard time over using air tools or, you know what? My garage, I'll do what I want. Let's see if I can get in here without being in the way. Probably not. I see, it looks like we've had a fire in here. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this, how black this is. If you can see this white stuff, this air box is all melted. It's got like, so it's all melted plastic in here, so it looks like we may have had a fire in here at one point. So we're going to do a valve adjustment too, because I bet you it's blowing back through the intake and causing the gas to ignite and burn inside the air filter box. Let's get this off. Go backwards. That's one thing I miss about my battery-powered ratchet. At least it was quiet. See, now that speeds that up. That's the reason why I use power tools. All right, we take a flathead screwdriver and we pop off the throttle linkage. There we go. We're gonna undo our choke connection here. This gasket here. Still good. There's also another gasket on the other side here. That one's still good. Let's turn that key off just to ensure we're good. Pop our fuel line off. Set that there for a moment. Okay. All right, I think we're gonna take the carburetor over to the bench. We'll take this over to the bench and we'll take it apart. So, here's the carburetor. Let's see, is that upside down? It's probably gonna be upside down. It's gonna be upside down. So let's get this off here. I believe that's a 12 millimeter. Yes, this is a 12 millimeter. I'm gonna flip it over actually and but good. Let me get a drain pan here because I'm making a mess. All right, let me put it in the vise so I can crack this open. And I only put it in the vise to hold it. It makes it, it just makes it that much easier to get gain leverage. All right, so some of the gas is already drained out of this. It's already spilled all over the bench, so there's not as going to be as much in here as there should be. All right, a little bit of rust. I'm sure that main jet is blocked. There's some, there's some chunkies in here. Granted, there is some stuff in here from other things, but we'll clean that bowl last because I don't want to spray carburetor cleaner all over that O-ring and I want to take it off of there and put it in the carb after the fact. All right, so let's see if we can Get this pin out. Yep. See, these are not pressed in, so they come right out. Take the float out. You want to look at that rubber tip and make sure it's good and it looks good to me. Throw that on the bench. And we're going to take all these jets out. Take that out so we can get the pilot out. A lot of crap in here. Not as much as I expected, but there's still crap in the carb. All right, so let's see if this one will work. Yeah, this will work. Just gotta turn it. Okay. Remember, these are soft metals in here, so you don't wanna be going go hunga on them. All right, so there's our main. And it is blocked, so we'll clean it. Wonder if we can get the tube out. Nope. 
It's all right, we can kind of wash around it. So let's take the pilot out. Will that fit in there? No, I gotta get a smaller screwdriver. See, the problem with these screwdrivers that I have, okay, that's a better fit, is that they're wide on one end and then they taper. I don't like that, I like the ones that are straight. Oh, there we go. That's a much better, a much better uh, fitment. Okay, there's our pilot. I'm sure that's blocked. We'll clean that up. Look at how black it is. I don't know if you can see that. If it comes across on camera, it should be shiny brass, but it's not. All right, so that is all of the stuff that comes out that I can get out without damaging the carburetor. So now we'll get some carb cleaner, we'll get down in there and Okay. It is just so sooty in this thing. This thing is dirty. Look at that. I don't know if you can see down in there, but that is soot. Okay. All right, so a subscriber has sent me some of these brushes. I don't think I had a chance to really use them last year. Basically carburetor cleaning brushes. So we'll kind of get in here and I'll scrub this down here a little bit with this. And they're just like a soft nylon brush. They're not aggressive or anything like that. I just want to see if I can clean some of the gunk out of here. And there's all different sizes here. Some have brushes on them. Some are just metal. I've never used anything like this before, so I don't really feel that it's required. But if you want to go for it, go for it. Okay, and then we'll go on the throttle side here and just kind of brush it out a little. Normally I would like to put this in a ultrasonic cleaner, but my ultrasonic cleaner is not working. And I think I can clean it faster than the ultrasonic cleaner could. Though, the ultrasonic cleaner would be able to probably get into places I couldn't. Good job, me. You want to make sure also that when you are cleaning carburetors, you try to avoid getting anything rubber wet with this stuff because it will break down the rubber. It'll make it expand. It'll just cause all kinds of havoc on it. I mean, even these gloves, these cheap-ass gloves, it will eat right through them in a short period. Actually, yeah, like I say, it actually destroyed the glove. You can see how the carb cleaner is just like eating it. Okay, so that's carburetor cleaned to the best of, of my ability at this point. Now this is a two piece. I don't know, you can see that. It could be a real chore to get these apart. And a lot of times, most of the time, at least in my experience, I've been able to just hook them on the end of the straw here and give them a, and they're usually good. And now I could actually see through it. So I know that's good. That's our main jet. So we'll plop this bad boy back in. Hopefully the screwdriver is long enough. Yeah, okay. So once it seats, I will just give it a little twist just to ensure that it's seated 
all the way. Okay, and then we'll take our pilot. I'm going to Oh, I could actually see through it now. Very, very little, but I can st I can see through it. I wonder if I can clean this off. Well, a little better than what it was. So now it's not so, it's actually shining now. I'll drop that back in. Then I'll clean the float off, but I'm not gonna clean the float valve or the needle valve. Okay. Now we'll put our pilot cap on here. That just snugs. Okay, that's clean. Without replacing the carburetor, this is the best way to go. See, now this thing has a little rubber tip on it. I'm gonna move that out of the way. So this little rubber tip is very sensitive to carburetor cleaner. It will swell and then it won't be any good. So try your best to avoid carburetor spray. Even the rubber gasket or the O-ring that goes around the base of the bowl, you don't want that to get any carburetor cleaner on it either. The one thing you want to check too with your carb is if uh, you notice there's some issues with fuel. Sometimes these will develop pinholes in them and they will flood and they will no longer float. So that's something to keep in mind. If the float is full of fuel, then the float is no good. It's not really worth time and energy to go through and try to find this, the leak. Uh, most of the time you can just find another float. Sometimes these things, these carburetors, there's really no rebuild kits for them because there's really nothing to rebuild. Most of them are, you can just take them apart and clean them. Okay. So that looks clean. I will put that on there. And then I will drop that in here like so. I'll take the retaining pin, slide it in. I see a little bit of dirt here. I'll just wipe it off with the towel. You also want to make sure that this operates smoothly. Okay. All right, so the carburetor's back together. Now I'm gonna take this O-ring off of here. See this rubber O-ring? I'm just gonna wipe it off with a dry paper towel, shop towel. And then I'm going to lay it right in there. Okay. Now if I got carburetor cleaner on that, it would be much bigger than that opening and I'd never be able to get it to seat properly. And it would probably leak. Well, no probably is involved. It would most definitely leak. So there's a little bit of rust in the bottom of this bowl, so I know this guy is using ethanol-based fuel. Okay, so I put that on there. Put this on here. Now we'll tighten it down. Okay, it's not going on correctly, so we gotta back it up. It's not seating, there we go. You gotta make sure the rip lip sits perfectly flush all the way around. If it doesn't, then you gotta reseat it. Cause you'll bend, bend the bowl and it won't be a good thing for you. Okay, so now I'll just wipe it off. Get some of the heavy crap off of there. Okay, let's go back over to the cart and see what happens. Okay, installing the carburetor is just exactly the same as uninstalling it or removing it just in the opposite direction. Slide this on, and there is a gasket here, and that's still good. That rarely fails, that gasket, so we don't really, I never really worry about it myself. Let's install the choke plate. We'll snap on our throttle. Okay. Reinstall this gasket. Try to remember which way we took it off, which is this way. Nope, this way. 
Okay. So this thing doesn't keep blowing apart on me. Let me just put this nut on here. Everything is just covered in soot. All right, so before we put that on, what I want to do is I actually want to pump some fuel through that after I change the fuel filter so that I know we're good on that front. I'm going to date the filter. Let's take this filter off here. What I try to do, I try to remember to do this, is pull the filter off the tank side first so that way that crap that's in there doesn't go back down into the tank. Yeah, that filter's got some uglies in it, so that's good. At least we got that out now. I'm gonna get my little drain pan here. I wanna pump some gas through that just to make sure we have most of what we can get out of it out. So over here off to the side, we got that. There we go. That's actually nice and clean. All right, we'll slide that back on. Tighten up our hose clamp. Can you see me? You can see what I'm doing maybe, possibly, hopefully. Okay, there's the hose clamp. We'll slide this back in here. Plug in the PCV. I gotta change out this air box, possibly, potentially, but I first have to I have to ask the customer first. I can't just do, unfortunately. I'll switch this around, we'll use this. Because these are really stiff. Okay. All right, let's see if this engine will actually start and run without choke. Fuel pump is pumping. Look at that. Pick up in a little bit. All right, so we have a valve issue. Okay. So I think we have a little bit of a valve issue now. You saw that, that was no choke whatsoever. It cranked over a little bit and then it finally fired up and it sounded good. No choke at all, so that's a good thing. And I know some of you guys will ask, what's the adjustment for these carburetors? Well, there isn't any. There really, really isn't any adjustment on them. They're just, they're already set. There's no manual adjustment, I should say. Uh, there's a little thing on top you can turn, but it's only like an eighth of a turn, so it doesn't really do much. Now this thing does smoke like a son of a bitch, too. Let me clean this off a little bit here, and we'll pop that valve cover off. Let's just wipe off this little bit of crap here real quick, as much as we can. I like to use my little impact driver to back these out because um, I could really feel what these are like when they do. Key is off. Let's get that cover off there. I'm going to adjust you guys here so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Break that seal. I like to put it in this little tray here so I don't get oil on everything. Key is off, just to make sure. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna to go to each valve, starting with the intake. Now the engine is a little bit more warm than I would like it to be. 
Okay, it's just room temperature warm, it's not hot, so that's good. You have to do this adjustment on a cold engine. Cannot do this with the engine hot. Specifically says that in the EasyGo service manual. So those of you that want to challenge me on it, I'm going based on what EasyGo says. Four thousandths of an inch or 0.1 millimeter. That one's tight. Let's go to this exhaust valve here. That one's good. Who's next? This is going to make a huge difference in the running of this. That intake valve is okay. We're going to adjust them all anyway, and that one's good. They're actually a bit loose, so we'll just take them apart and adjust them. Now, these are 9 millimeter. I'm actually going to crack them all loose because we're going to be doing them all. Wow, really tight. Let's see here, the box end on this one. Okay. I mean, you can use a pliers to grab that square head or make the investment in square drive sockets. Okay. All right, so, and you wanna make sure the lobe, the cam lobe is facing straight down. Get under there. When you feel a little bit of resistance, that's where you want to be. There. Again, cold engine, not a warm engine. Okay, there's that one. We're going to move on to this intake here because I know this one's tight. Oof, there we go. Okay. It's one thing that's really hard. One thing I liked about the old Robin engine was that it used a straight slot so it made it a lot easier to hold back on it when you were adjusting it okay where these square drive ones are a little challenging to hold back on okay and then we'll do the next intake here go they weren't that bad I mean they really weren't that far out but you know it's a good idea to adjust them that is a routine maintenance thing so you know it's something that you want to do on a routine in a routine manner I guess but yeah these uh these square drive sockets are pretty nice I mean this would be a CRV e5 that's the measurement on that one so whatever whatever I don't know, whatever they call it, whatever that metric is that they're using to measure these. If it's a standard or not, I'm not sure. Just by adjusting the valves on this motor, that will significantly improve the performance of the engine. So it will run a lot better now. Uh, the next thing we got to do is check those spark plugs. Um, I'm actually going to reach out to the customer and see what they want to do about this air box uh, after we get everything else done because Okay, the drive starter belt's good. The drive belt's new. I put that on, I think it was only a couple of years ago. Okay, good. That's where they need to be. Not overly tight. Not under tight. Just right. When you know your tools and you know what you're doing and you know the feel of things, you can use any tool you want. We have all the major issues fixed on this engine, on this cart rather. So now all we have to do is go through the oil change and check the spark plugs, grease the front end, and then check the other three tires to make sure they're actually at the right PSI that they need to be at. 22 is typically what the sidewall rating will be. 
and then we should be good to go. I actually just noticed I forgot a... How many of you were screaming at the monitor, you forgot the clamps? I could hear it now. <laughs> All right, let's pop out them spark plugs. Holy crap. Ooh. Oh my God. Well, at least they were in tight. I <laughs> have to worry about them being loose. Yeah, they're a bit carboned up. I think we'll go ahead and change them out instead of trying to clean them up. We'll just put new ones in. Now that the engine's running better, it should uh, basically clean itself out. Once he gets it up to temperature. Actually, that one's still in good shape. But we're here, we're gonna do them both. I like to put a little dab of high temperature anti-seize on the threads. That way we know that they won't get stuck in there. They shouldn't gall the threads because it is an aluminum head. This is the MCI engine. <clears throat> okay. I hate this thing. This thing is so annoying. Okay, we'll turn them tight and then squash that thread or the washer and we're good. They don't need to be gahunga tight either. Okay. <clears throat> Choke's good. Let's see if see how well it runs now. Perfect. Almost. She's, she smokes a lot. I think this engine is, hopefully that's just from, no, that's oil. That's definitely burning oil. That really sucks. Okay, now that the valves are adjusted, carburetor's cleaned, new spark plugs, new fuel filter. We got a new air filter for it. the date on it there put that here oh wait a minute we got to put all this just putting this in here for now i want to clean that stuff up the next thing we need to do is oil change and we'll test the battery can you guys see what i'm doing no you can't so now i'm hooking up the battery tester this is a solar model number ba227 this will actually go through and do a battery test and a system charging test. So battery type is flooded, cold cranking amps. It is 555 cranking amps above 32. It's testing and it's passed. So we're good there. And I got grease all over my cable here. Let's uh, wipe this off right now before I get it all over me and this cart. So I'll print the results for that. And then this will give a, a physical copy to the customer, which is really nice. It's one thing I really like about these little testers. And now we're gonna do a system test, which is gonna basically test the charging system and the loads. But first I probably should make sure all the loads are working. Oh, and they're not, that's convenient. The backlight's working? Oh, nothing's working. Oh, what the hell? Okay, now everything's working. What the hell is that all about? That was weird. All right, so let's make sure all, all the turn signals are working. We might as well check the lights while we've got them on here. One issue is the headlight on the passenger side is basically busted. I don't have a new lens for that. I'm gonna have to, maybe I'll put a big washer on there and that might help keep it together. 
Looks like the passenger side rear turn signal is out. The front one, yeah. The tail light out too? Okay, so just the just the turn signal switch look or the turn signal itself looks like it's out. Alright, so now we can tech we can turn off our loads. Cranking volts not detected. Okay. Let's start this over because I kind of let it go idle here and it didn't like that. So what I'm gonna have to basically do is start the engine. System test, turn off load, start engine. So it's, I mean, I don't know if you, if it's portraying on camera at all, but it is in sorry shape, this cart. This poor engine is, it's in desperate need of a rebuild. So it has, based on the way it's smoking, it seems like it's got bad rings. I can do a compression test to test that, uh, but just by how much it's smoking after it gets running, I know that it needs rings. I have to open the door because it's smoky in here. So in the interest of saving time, I went ahead and I already fixed the tail light. It was just the bulb was loose. I took it out, cleaned the terminals, put it back in. Everything works now. All turn signals, all headlights and taillights are working just fine. I cleaned the battery and put the battery per terminal protectant on. So let's get on to the oil change. Let's check this oil, see what it looks like. It's a little gross. Okay. Okay. That one, that one, and that one. Okay, so we're done on the air box. All right, so for the oil change, we're gonna pull the dipstick, wipe it off, put it there, take the oil filler cap off, turn the key off because we don't wanna be making a mess. Put that right there. That will allow air in, so when we drop the oil, it'll just flow right out. Got you down here with me on the underside of this cart. Here's our oil filter right here. It's got three 10 millimeter bolts. So 10 millimeter. Holy shit. Okay, we're gonna get a bigger ratchet because I need more leverage. And I like these little extensions that have like a little swivel head on them. So it makes it nice and convenient to get into tight areas like this. There we go, that's cracked loose. We're gonna crack them all loose first and and throw the ratchet across the garage floor. Let's see here. There we go. And there we go. Okay. Ooh, this one's really tight. Why? That shouldn't be that tight. And the brake cable and the throttle cable are getting in the way which causes my arm to get in the way. All right, let's see if I can. See, if you remove the dipstick and oil fill cap, it'll allow the oil to flow out of this filter hole a lot faster without glugging. Because they do glug, it'll go glug 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 glug. And just be forewarned, it will come out of here gushing in a very, very quick manner if you're not watching what you're doing. Let's see if I can do this with this hand. Probably not. I'm gonna make a mess. There we go. Ooh, that stinks. Super black. Smells very gassy. See, and these filters are washable. Some of them are brass and some are stainless steel mesh. Okay, and the O-ring, there's supposed to be an O-ring in there, but it's, it's stuck to the filter. There's no metal chunks inside the, 
didn't see. I don't see any metal chunks on the mesh. I'm gonna go wash this off with carburetor cleaner. I'll be right back. All right, so we're good. I was a little concerned with something that I saw on the filter, but it wasn't anything. Um, so everything's good. It was just a little bit of sludge buildup inside one of the pleats. And that's probably due to the engine being wore out. Next time I do this, if I do, I'm going to make sure to put the <laughs> camera on the other side. There we go. Okay. And just like in a spin-on oil filter, you want to make sure that you oil that really good. Clean oil is preferred, but this will work too. Like that oil, it smells burnt. So I don't know how hard this cart was run, but it smells like it's it's been run really hard just by the smell. So that tells me there's probably a good amount of blow-by past the, the piston rings. When these gloves get oily, they're very hard to very hard to grip a smooth chrome steel. <laughs> okay, okay, and okay, okay. Okay, now we get to go back topside and fill it with oil. These Robin engines hold just over a quart and a half. I like to say 1.6 quarts, that's U.S. quarts, quarts, and it takes the oil pretty quick, which is nice. But I do like to keep the, the tube out of the hole just a little bit so I can make sure I'm not flooding. There's no baffles in these, so they do take the oil pretty quick, which is nice. There we go. I could smell that burnt oil smell coming right out of there. So needless to say, there's only so much we're going to be able to do to keep this engine alive. I mean, it's basically going to need a rebuild. And we're spot on. Well, once we run it, it'll be a little better. Okay. Alrighty. So typically on these carts, what happens is this bolt that runs through here, you can see how rusted it is. This bolt in here gets all crappy and cattywampus up inside there and causes the pedal to stick. I mean, you can see it doesn't want to, the spring doesn't want to return it. And the spring is in good shape. It's actually very lightly rusted, but it's not terrible. A lot of times what you can do is you can get away with just loosening this nut and bolt and that will help. But that only sometimes works. So we're going to try to loosen this up. This bolt end here, it is so hard to get a wrench on this because there's no meat to it. This is a really terrible design. Now once you get them apart, you're able to clean them out. You can clean them out with like a very fine wire brush type of thing and lubricate them with some red grease. And usually it's good after that, but the hardest part about this is actually getting it to come apart. All right, so this is a 9 16 on this end. Okay, so that's a 3 quarters, or probably even a 19 millimeter. Let's try to loosen this 9 16 up first. Hopefully I won't knock the camera off the cart. I'm going to try to loosen that. Okay, that loosened that up quite a bit, actually. Now I should be able to get this off and the, like I said the hardest part about this assembly here is yeah see now it's moving freely yeah so it's actually it's actually good now though the three-quarter nut is oh you know what we might be able to get this apart I didn't think this was gonna come apart this easily 
I don't have any of these specialty bolts, so I couldn't take this apart and cut. I, if I couldn't get it apart, I would have to normally cut it. I would have to cut off this head with the angle grinder and push the bolt out this way. No, I'm sorry. I'd have to push the bolt out this way, so that means I'd have to heat all of this up with the torch. I was thinking of the Yamaha. Um, I'd have to heat all of this up with the torch and get it hot to melt the plastic bushings inside here, and then I'd have to rebuild this brake pedal assembly from scratch. But because I don't have any of that stuff, I can't do that, so I'm gonna put this nut on here. I'm gonna take my mini sledge. I'm not gonna use the rubber mallet, let's see. Yeah, look at that, it's coming right apart. So that'll come apart easily. There's a little bit of rust in there, it looks like. But let's see if I can, see if I can get under here like this. Yeah, that's gonna come apart. Okay, we're, we're in good shape. We're in good shape. There's a washer. There we go. I honestly, I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't think it was gonna come out, but you can see how specialized that bolt is. The shaft is the large diameter where the nut threaded end is, it's got a shoulder on it. So the only way it can come out is this way. Now, we're gonna pull this down carefully, maybe. Let's see here. Just watch that spring don't pop you in the face. Okay, now we'll just pry it out. Now that the parking brake is locked, we'll... There we go. See, the spring is in good shape. There's nothing wrong with the spring, but that bushing here, these bushings are a little funky. I think they just need to be lubricated, if you want my honest opinion. And I don't have these bushings, unfortunately. So I'm gonna put a little lubrication on this, and then we'll ship it home here and see what happens. I use this stuff on my excavator. So I know it's good stuff. Okay. So now we're gonna be covered in grease. Yay. I exclaim with great relish. Okay. Okay. I don't know if it's actually gonna take the grease, but we're gonna try. Okay, now I wanna wipe my hands off so I'm not getting grease all over everything. Keep it out of the way. See, that's going in very easy. I'm just having a hard time swinging the damn hammer. Wow, way better, way better. That's how it's supposed to be. This brake design, in my opinion, I think is stupid, but you know. Any followers of the channel for any length of time, you guys know how I feel about easy goes. Can you see what I'm doing? And then once it gets to the jam nut part, because it's a nylock nut. Just gonna get it snug. Now the backside is spinning, okay? Okay. Okay, much better. So the pedal is fully retracting now, like it's supposed to. That's a good thing. Okay. Look at that, perfect. That's what we want. All right, guys, that is going to do it for this one. Brake pedals adjusted, all the lights work, tires are all inflated properly. I didn't film that, that you know, that's kind of boring to watch somebody put air in tires. Oil change is done, fuel and air filters are done, spark plug as well. So this thing is ready to go. Brakes are good too, by the way. 
Uh, so we're gonna get this thing out of here and get the next one in because we got a bunch to do. Thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it as always. Be sure to like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you already haven't. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified anytime I upload videos to the channel. Leave a comment down below in the comment section. And until next time, we'll see you guys in the next video.